Hello, everyone, and welcome back again. My name is Keith Gebhardt, and in this lecture, we're going to discuss the ARP protocol. Address Resolution Protocol is also known as ARP, okay? Now, I always love seeing that show up on my screens because, yes, it is an awesome protocol. Now, you all might think I'm crazy, but really, ARP is such a simple protocol, but it's such an important protocol to understand, and personally, I think it's fun trying to explain. ARP is used to map IP addresses to MAC addresses and then stores the information in its ARP table. Our computers and routers all have ARP tables, and those devices will look at that ARP table at any time when it needs to send information across the networks so it can learn the Layer 3 addressing and then learn the Layer 2 addressing associated to it. If you type in an IP address in your web browser or ping an IP address that your computer has never seen before, it will send out what's called an ARP broadcast, essentially a broadcast message, okay? It will use this broadcast address of 12 Fs, and the network will now know to send that message out to every device on the network but the one it came from. And just remember that routers, our Layer 3 devices, are the only devices on our networks that separate broadcast domains. Routers also use what? IP addresses to communicate packets across networks, okay? That's very important to just keep in mind as we go through this course. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this image for a moment. Let's just go ahead and say we pinged the server down here, which is what, 192.168.1.20. And we are coming from the 1.10 computer. So just like your GPS in your car, the destination address is where you're trying to go to. So we could say that this address here is what, our destination address. And then this address here is where, you are, where we are sending from. So we're communicating from this address, right? We are Bob, and we're trying to reach Larry. So we're going over this way. So that means this is our source address, OK? That is very important to remember as we move through into data encapsulation. But let's talk about this ARP for a second. Well, if Bob's ARP table, so this is his ARP table over here, is empty. So he's got his IP address here and his MAC address here, and there's no information on it. It's just empty. He's never been communicating through this network before. Well, what he's going to do is say, since I typed in this 1.20 address, I know I need to find this address. Since I am on the same subnet, because his default gateway is probably going to be 1.1 or something equivalent, right? Since he knows he is in the same subnet, it's not a 2 or 3, right? It's just the same subnet, which is 1, and his address is 20, he needs to stay in this network. He's not going to need to go to his default gateway. So he's going to send this broadcast ARP message out asking. It's basically like a megaphone. So pretend this is a little megaphone here. Someone's holding it and just screaming into the megaphone. And this is just bellowing out, okay? It's saying, hello, where are you? 1.20, are you out there? So this packet's going to get sent out to every device on the same network. Sally's going to get it and simply say, this is not for me. I am 1.15. Well, Larry's going to get it and say, yes, I am 1.20. It's me. But you need something else. I need you to have my MAC address, which is E46E. So Larry's going to send his MAC address back to Bob. Now, Bob's going to take that uh, 1.20 IP address and associate it to his E. 4, 6, E, MAC address. Now, any time they communicate from here on out, all he's got to do is look at his IP address when someone types either in the web URL with this uh, IP address, or if they're trying to ping this IP address, his computer is going to look in the ARP table right here, say, okay, to get to that, all I need to do is reach this. It's that simple. ARP is a lot of fun, but as you can see, it is very important because without it, we just simply wouldn't know how to access or reach other devices on our network. It's, it's, it's absolutely an imperative protocol to understand and for our networks to utilize for our network communication, okay? So what I want you guys to do right now is go ahead and open up your Cisco Packet Tracer programs that we installed earlier in this course. And we are going to build a small lab. And this lab you need to save so as we move forward in this course, we can continue adding a little bit of things to it so you can see how this data encapsulation um, communication process is actually happening. So we're going to start off and build our basic um, lab here. And this lab will be used to show our ARP process. And then, like I said, we will add to it as we move forward in the course. So just go ahead and grab your devices as I am. If you need to, if I'm going too fast at any point, just go ahead and pause the video or slow down the video, okay? Now, essentially, this is exactly what we saw in the image in the last uh, slide, but we're going to actually create it so we could watch it. Now, I'm just going to address these computers, 192.168.1.10. This bottom PC will be 192.168.1.15. 
and our server address will be 192.168.1.20. Now I need to figure out the MAC addresses. Now I want to see what the MAC address is and write them down on here because it'll make it a little bit easier to actually um, compare the ARP table to the devices communicating when we visually see it. You're not, because the only way to really visually see the ARP or the MAC address on these devices is if you hover over them like I am doing right now. So I saw he was 8E6E. So I'm just going to type in, in the name here, 8E6E, so I can keep track of that. Our server's MAC address is E977. So I'm just going to type in E977. And our bottom computer here is going to be 8D56. So just click this guy, 8D56. All right. So once you do that, now we need to connect these devices. And I'm just going to click the lightning bolt here and use a copper straight through cable from fast ethernet port on the computer to any port on the switch. It does not matter which port you use. I like to just keep it neat. So I'm going one through four and fast ethernet zero, two, three and from our router down. Now we don't need a router in here really, but I just want to get it configured right now so we don't have to worry about too much later on as we move forward. So I'm just going to click the CLI and when you get this continue with configuration dialog, you're going to say no. Just type in an N, hit enter, and now we type in enable to get into privilege mode and come T to get into global configuration mode. And then I'm going to do interface FA 0 slash 0 and I'm going to say IP address 192.168.1.1255.255.255.0. That is our class C subnet mask. Enter. Now, this IP address we gave this interface is our default gateway address, okay? And then we need to turn that port on. By default, all ports on a router are shut off. So we need to tell it to turn on. And to do that, we say no, shut down. Hit enter. And then I'm going to say D. O for do, WR for write, and that's just going to save our configuration. Good. So now we need to just physically address our computers. So you just click the computer, click desktop tab, and then click IP configuration. Static is fine. 192.168.1.10. And I forgot my decimal here. And the subnet mask will automatically populate, but we do need to add our default gateway, 192.168.1.1. And all you got to do is hit the X. We do not worry about our DNS server for this lab, okay? And then our computer over here, or our server rather, we hit desktop, static 192.168.1.20, and then 192.168.1.1 for the default gateway again. And then our bottom computer down here is going to be 192.168.1.15, and then again 192.168.1.1. Cool. So we are good to go. Now, let's go ahead and watch what happens to our packet when we send it through the ARP, okay? So I'm going to click this little stop, look, and watch doohickey thing over here. And this is how we uh, sniff packets in Packet Tracer. It's basically a virtual packet sniffer. So what I'm going to do is open up my computer. And first, I want to show you the ARP table. So I'm going to type in ARP-A and show you that there are no ARP entries found. Normally, this would be filled with a bunch of IP addresses and MAC addresses, OK? So to actually visually see this packet go through, let me just reposition this. And uh, let me move that down just a hair, just so we could see everything, right? And there we go. And click this guy, make this a little smaller. Cool. All right, so now that we're there, and I'm going to go ahead and type in ping, 192.168.1.20. OK, and why am I doing that? Again, because I am trying to send a packet from this computer to this computer. So I need to communicate across the networks here, right? So if I type in ping 192.168.1.20, hit enter, you see my packet is being generated. Now I'm just going to hit auto capture here and watch. It's going to go to the switch, and now it's going to get sent out what? Well, before we continue, look at this. So ping's protocol uses the ICMP protocol. And then it's going to, if I click the ping, you're going to see, all right, well, I need to, this is where I'm coming from, the 1.10 address. And this is where I'm going to, 1.20, like I told you in the last uh, slide, right? Now, ARP, look at this. Since it doesn't have an ARP table built, it needs to use the broadcast address of these 12 Fs, OK? So it's going to send that as its destination. And it's going to go out to, what, every device on the network but the one it came from. So if I go ahead and continue capturing this, you can see how those packets just now indeed went out the switch to the router, to our server, and to our bottom computer. You see the X. He's saying, no, it's not for me. It's not for me. He's going to say, yes, it's for me, 
but I need you to have my MAC address and send this back. So if we go ahead and continue this capture, you'll see he is the only one that sends a packet back to our 1.10 computer. And once that packet gets there, we're going to stop this packet um, capture because ping by default sends out four ICMP echo and uh, echo message request replies. Okay, so I'm just going to stop that. I'm going to reset simulation. Let me close out of this and let's go ahead and just click this computer. And now let's go ahead and just hit ARP again. I'm just using the up arrow, hit enter, and look at that. It took the 1.20 address for the server, and it mapped it to its MAC address, okay? So it's saying, hey, where is 1.20? It sent the ARP, quest, the ARP broadcast out. He replied, hey, it's me. And then he replied back with his MAC address. So now anytime this computer needs to communicate to the server again, it just compares it in here. He's able to build his pack or his segment packet and frame for the data encapsulation, send that data out, and all is good, okay? So you got to see ARP and how it maps the IP addresses to MAC addresses and how if the ARP table has no information in it, it will send out a broadcast message using the 12 Fs to every device on the network but the device it came from. Now, if you have any questions, please use this time to ask your questions and leave your comments. Also, please do not forget to check out Learn Tech Training on YouTube for free lectures, labs, and promotional offers for future courses we offer. We're going to continuously be adding more videos to it. Right now, there aren't too many at, at this point in time, but we are going to be adding videos to it weekly. So it's a good idea to subscribe to our Learn Tech Training on YouTube and follow along with those so you can actually see some free uh, resources that we provide for you guys. All right. So I will see you guys in the next lecture.